So one question is, by looking at this, we can wonder like, what are the type of uh, shocks, what are the type of disturbances that could explain the fluctuation on the labor market. So I want to understand why the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate move. Now we see here, unemployment rate and vacancy rate, they are directly determined by tightness. So of course, I want to explain um, essentially why tightness uh, moves so much in the labor market. Uh, so let's look at the equation we have here, this implicit definition of the tightness. What are the things that can move in there so that the tightness moves over time? Uh, so we can isolate a few of these things. So what do we have? Well, uh, what are the candidates? So one we see it here. This is uh, the technology level of the firm. It's labor productivity, if you want. That's a typical uh, candidate to explain uh, labor market fluctuation. This is something we look very often. So yes, you know, uh, this is just saying that well, if workers are sometimes more productive, sometimes less productive, then we expect the unemployment rate to move a lot. And why would their productivity change? Well, I mean, it could be that um, the production techniques uh, fluctuate over time, but it could also be that um, there are times when firms, so think about a restaurant, you know, the production technique of a restaurant doesn't change too much over time. So sometimes you have big innovation, say the microwave is invented, um, or there is a suddenly a better system to manage tables um, so that you can have more customers to your restaurant. So sometimes you have big innovation that improves the productivity of labor and you expect the size of restaurants as well as unemployment uh, to change. Uh, but some things that happen more often than these big innovations that don't really happen every day are changes in the demand for restaurants. So sometimes you have uh, many more people who want to go to a restaurant. Cooks and waiters in the restaurants are much busier just because there is so much demand and therefore they you know, they are more productive just because there is not much idle time, there is a constant demand. So the way we would capture that is our, in our model is to have a higher uh, value for A, the so, um, productivity parameter in the production function. Sometimes nobody comes to the restaurants, restaurants are very empty, and so in practice cooks and waiters are quite unproductive in that time, just because there is nobody to consume what they produce. We would represent that with a low value of A, um, the productivity. So that's one possible source of fluctuation. Um, something that could also move over time here is, uh, for instance, the size of the labor force. You know, that would be, it's not impossible that sometimes you have more people who want to enter the labor force, sometimes you have fewer people who want to enter the labor force, so we could study what happens if the size of the labor force um, fluctuates systematically and try to see if that could help us explain what we see on the labor market. Also, you know, in that case, um, so labor productivity A is something that's hard to measure, but the size of the labor force, that's something we can measure easily, so it would be easy to see whether that's actually a plausible source of shock. Uh, so, nevertheless, we, you know, we're going, uh, we going to explore that a bit later. Uh, what what could be, would be the impact of fluctuation in um, the size of the labor force? Another thing that could move is S here, uh, the job separation rate. You know, we could have, we could imagine that uh, in certain periods, many more jobs are destroyed than in other periods. And if that job separation rate, which is also something we can measure, nevertheless, if that job separation rate fluctuated systematically, uh, we could also have uh, fluctuations in unemployment that are um, driven by that. Um, so this would be uh, kind of the most uh, obvious source of business cycle fluctuations here, and these are sources that are, are studied typically in the, in the literature, okay? So let me, um, let me summarize that. What are our potential sources of unemployment fluctuation? So we said one was A. Um, so productivity. 
parameter in our production function. That's something that people have been studying a lot. 2 would be S, the job separation rate. Again, something that has um, attracted quite a lot of uh, work, just because people have this idea that maybe um, recessions are time when firms shed a lot of labor. Um, and so, you know, if the job separation rate moves systematically, we could create business cycle that way. 3H, the labor labor force, um, or, you know, the size of the labor force. Again, that's something that has attracted quite a lot of attention just because there are many theories that have been built around the idea that there are times when um, more people want to participate in the labor market, there are times where people are more reluctant to participate in the labor market. So this could create fluctuations, uh, this could create fluctuations in unemployment. And if um, labor force participation is not measured very well, uh, you know, and so we don't know exactly what happens to labor force participation, we could still have uh, fluctuations in age could give us you know, even um, could give us fluctuation in uh, in the labor market. Okay, so these are three possibilities that we're going to explore that people have uh, looked at in the literature. If we go back to our equation, you see um, you also see that there are other elements that are involved here. So, for instance, you have uh, alpha, the shape of the production function. But it's typical in macroeconomics to to assume that production function keep a constant shape. So we're not going to look at what happens when alpha moves. Same thing, we have the functions f and tau. These functions come uh, from the matching function. And here again, you know, we follow the assumption or you know, kind of common practice in macro to assume that the matching function is um, stable, stable over time. So we're not really going to look at what would happen if um, f or tau changed. And we're going to assume that f and tau uh, are stable. Uh, but, um, you know, something that, it's something that could be done. We could look at uh, what happens if the matching function change and try to look at uh, what we would get. But the idea is that um, the matching function and the production functions are fairly stable over time and so, uh, so we are not going to look too much uh, to watch at uh, what happens here. All right. So, so these are the these are the possible sources of fluctuation that we we'll explore. So, um, if we go back, they, they fall into two categories. Um, productivity parameters is something that's going to affect the um, labor demand, as you can see here. It's on the um, right hand side of the equation. The size of the labor force, the job separation rate, S, um, these are things that are on the um, left hand side of the equation. So these are supply side parameters. So we are going to contrast, uh, we are going to contrast both. So you see this would be demand shock, labor demand shock. And these two things this would be labor supply shocks. So we are going to contrast uh, shocks that affect the labor demand with um, shocks that affect the labor supply. And again, in macroeconomics, there is a long history, uh, there's a long tradition of a research that tries to separate between shocks that emanate from the demand side and shocks that emanate from the supply side. The reason, as we'll see much later in the course, is that um, in terms of policy implications, shocks that emanate from the demand side and shocks that emanate from the supply side, they have very different implications for policies. Um, so people have tried to separate uh, to separate that and um, try to see whether things come from the supply side or from the demand side.